Um, well, anyone else uh, pulls up the doc to log attendance and add stuff. Is there anyone that would like to introduce themselves today? So this is the first meeting of February. I'm glad to be back and able to host again. And I would love to hear from anyone who um, maybe has started joining in the last few few weeks while I've been out. It looks like the activity on the agenda is slowing down. Of course, any pull requests or bugs that need some extra attention, be sure to drop those on. And if there's no intros starting off today, we can go ahead and jump into the agenda bullet points. I should just start with the first point. Yeah, it looks like that's you, Roman. OK, okay. Um, I just wanted to uh, mention that uh, we started some test improvements again on the end-to-end -end testing Hubert. Like we found out that the end-to-end -end test cleanup is taking four to six seconds between every test. And we're mostly just hitting the Kubernetes uh, rate, client-side rate limiting here. and. We can bring it down easily to one to two seconds. I'm working on that and ex it exposes quite a lot of flaky tests again. So I'm still working through them. And just a general reminder that uh, if you are developing features and you still have tests which are not running in parallel yet, it's worth looking into it. It really helps cutting down the test times a lot to speed up CI for everyone. But so, and if you're interested in the cleanup PR, just have a look. Um, I'm covered from a review perspective, just what gives people a chance to look into it too. That's basically it from my side. Uh, Roman, does the test usually run automatically in parallel or uh, is yeah, it just uh, a serial with a tag? So when, when, you're, when you're running a test lane, Ginkgo is actually run two times. First, it's executing the, the parallel tests that are, that are all tests which do not have the serial tag in the name. And then it has an exclusion and exclude regex on the second run where it only runs the serial tests so that the parallel tests are not run again. Or the other way around. <laughs> so yeah. basically, Serial tag means they are not, not running in parallel. No serial tag means they're running parallel. And there are also some security checks in place, like when you're in a parallel test modifying the keyword configuration, the test will fail because that's not allowed in parallel tests and so on. So it's pretty easy to do, actually, I think and hope. Does that answer the question? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, next. I have nothing else to add here. Yeah. On the next um, item, it looks like we have some concern about issues being closed prematurely or without notice of why. But <clears throat> there is a bot that is are closing them, mm -hmm. but we have a problem that that if I think we have a I don't know if it's good or bad, but some, it's for sure strange that uh, an issue will be closed because no one is answering. At the minimum, should be that someone said it's not a not a problem. I don't have enough information, and then it can be closed. Um, yeah, it's yeah. Um, so you are reacting basically to the last of the GitHub bots reminder. 
in that sense. So, yeah. Mm. Um, that, so when I see a bug like this, I tend to ask if it's still an issue and just yeah reopen so, or yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, in general, it's good that they get closed uh, because you get a few reminders before it gets closed. It's a chance for everyone, us and the reporter, to state again that the issue exists really yeah so so i think that, that the minimum should be that uh, we acknowledge that it was accepted that someone is going to answer something and only then maybe trigger the timer but uh and and i'm not i mean the problem i i found it by me by mistake because i saw uh, some other issue that seems that, that we opened there were open like five issues that are talking almost the same thing and they were linking between each other and one of them was linking to this one which i saw that it was closed that's why i found it it's not like I'm, i was looking for something like that uh, and yeah, that's maybe we need uh, like to think about this case where someone is opening the an issue and he's not getting any response. So if the response is that the bot is selling, it's going to be closed. It's not uh, not so nice. Um, that's Eddie, it. Eddie, I think I think there are two sides to that, right? On the one hand, of course, it's sad that no one even acknowledged this uh, this issue having having opened somehow um, and I think this is what we generally try to um, try to focus on when we are doing bug scrubs uh, at the moment or uh, at least issue scrubs or whatever how that's called I think it's bug scrub yeah and the other thing is um, that uh, of course um, when there is not much attention to an issue and the people or the the, the the person that that opened that issue did not really ask again probably somehow then this might not be that at, at least i'm expecting that that this might not be that issue or that he might have been fixing being able to fix that himself and probably just didn't follow up on his own issue and so i think after a while when there is no activity on an issue it's fair to close it somehow and i think we even have uh, even I think 90 days or something when it's the first time declared stale. Yeah, that's all. I I I understand what your point. I I agree with it, but I agree. I mean, I want to agree with it only after someone in the organization says something. So if the, after that that someone says something, it's it's 90 days. Obviously, you're right. But if so, no one says it, it's like someone missed it and that's not his fault i mean he can nag it but maybe he's not like in a culture not every culture will do it so it's uh... yeah I, I understand what you mean so maybe an, a quick idea that i have right now would be probably just to try uh to change the the filter uh, that we have for the box crop maybe we're looking for uh issues who don't have any triage um label somewhere because that could at least be some kind of um like just putting up new or uh, untriaged issues again so this would probably solve the problem another thing i would be yeah. curious about is if we can maybe update the uh template for i guess point directing people at um, the Slack or the mailing list in the event that they're unsure whether it's actually a bug or if it's more, more along the lines of like support and user configuration error type stuff. Um, because a lot of the stale ones that I've seen are more user education than actual bugs, at least uh, at first glance. And I don't know that everyone who, who reports those is familiar with jumping onto the Kubernetes stack. I don't know if that would be yeah. an un, un, unwelcome flooding of the channel either. 
you can, you can always uh, the, I mean the first the bot can say that uh, how to escalate it if there is no response or where to find more information that is possible I think it, I don't know if we already do it actually but but yeah. yeah by the way I wanted to make it like I want to give the other side um, so I had like I was looking in the last week or two on the on the issues that and and some of them it's like the long uh, long lost issues like the 90 days is too much for them so I that my question is is do we have even a, a policy that let's say that we answered we say I think this is uh, one two three four and we can wait for example a week for a response and if there is no response just to close it is it can we have some some rule about this um, because so, yeah I think I mean if you respond and the person which opened it is not responding anymore it will close sooner or later I don't see an issue the, I mean I mean it's not necessary it is... sometimes the conversation is really there is a clear end to a conversation and then they get closed sometimes like yeah this is really we cannot help on this because you're building your own container um, then you can then sometimes we just close them and write feel free to reopen if you think we can still contribute but in general, there's nothing and we just close it. But for the rest, if the person is just not answering, the bot can take care of it, I think. I don't think. Yeah, so this is. This is... So th this is exactly so. We Sometimes we do have the answer. We just politely wait, uh, for example, a week and then close it and say you can reopen if you think otherwise. But there are some. Uh, there are some. Sometimes the cases where uh, he didn't respond. I think whatever you, rules you, you make are... up there, they're not good enough. Yeah. So, I mean, when you when you think okay. there is nothing to add and it's clear that nothing can help you, you can close it and just try it. If you think this is wrong, just reopen. Okay. Okay, good. So, <laughs> okay. that's I mean, good with me. Yeah. No, because... Uh, so, but if you're answer, just leave it open like and it. the bot will close it. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, the problem with the bot closing it is that the bot will close it after I think ninety days, which is like huge amount of time. And then it's it's on you to monitor that. Uh, I mean, if you want to monitor it, but you get I mean, take you care. get GitHub notifications on emails. Uh, yeah, so not sure. What's and, the issue? If I may chime in, and the first thing that the bot does is it marks the issue stale after ninety days of inactivity. And then the second thing that will, uh, then it will get rotten after another day, it's 30 days of inactivity. And then after uh, another, I think, uh, let, me, let me have a, have a look at that. Where is that? I think another 30 days of even inactivity of a rotten issue, then it closes it. So I think if uh, 150 days with three reminders that your issue is stale or rotting or uh, if that's not enough then i'm not sure what we should do what i mean is what i mean is that i personally if i want to maintain to monitor my the some issues that i let's say i'm a sign on i really don't want them to rotten for half a year i want them to be closed so i will not think about it not see it in my list and not think yeah, about but, it. So if but, someone is not answering in uh, a week a or two, then that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. What? But if there is a change, you know, if, if this yeah, is yeah. your issue, if there is a change, you are getting reminded of that in the notification. So, for example, if, a, if you get a stale issue, you see that in your notification. And then you're free to act on that. You could rather directly close it if you want, or just leave it open and wait until the bot closes it. But that's your decision. Yeah, there's, yeah, yeah. An so amount of, I... there's an onus of responsibility to bug openers as, as much as on the, the maintainers. So just to just to, ma to make sure that I understand, is it is it fine for me after I answer something that I think it's no not not an issue from our side? Is it okay to close it after a w one week or two of no response myself? Like, with, I think uh, like, with, like Roman said, I think like yeah. Roman said, you can, you can, if you think this is not an issue for us, you can just uh, close it right away with a yeah, command, okay. for example, that like, 
Uh, if you think this is still an issue, then please reopen it. And I think this is fair, right? Because we don't have that much people. So I think we should at least try to keep the number of issues as low as possible. Great. Thank you. Great. And Alpha VM snapshot API feedback. Do I have that pulled up here? Do you want to speak to that? Hey, everyone. Um, so I mentioned this briefly last week, uh, sent this message out, and I said we'd discuss it here. Um, haven't heard from anyone. Um, so maybe someone here uh, has some feedback for the Snapshot API. Um, basically, it, it's been in alpha for a while. It has uh, been evolving slowly from, uh, you know, only doing supporting offline VMs to now um, it supports online VMs with FS freeze integration and it's pretty um, robust and we want to add even more functionality to it. But, um, you know, it's still uh, feature gated and we haven't heard much from the community about it. So um, wondering what you guys think. Here's a question. Um, is the snapshot API adopted by Red Hat at this point and part of the product? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's yes. So it's gone through Red Hat's um, quality process, like internal quality process, and it's in like the downstream product as in users can use it today. Correct. It is, in the, it is enabled uh, by default in the downstream product we sell to people. Um, so if we're going by the um, kind of guidelines that I'm, I'm trying to work on as far as like incrementing things from, or graduating things from alpha to beta, that counts for end user. Uh, well, I mean, it's a vendor technically, but uh, vendor or end user, anyone who's adopted this and put it in production and it's gone through, um, like another team has looked and verified this works for them. So that would be Red Hat's Q, QE or QA team. Um, I think that's that's enough validation that this can go to beta. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, definitely uh, we've invested a lot in it at Red Hat and we want to do more. It would just be great um, if we could get some feedback. I know everyone kind of does their own um, everyone seems to have their own backup strategy and restore strategy, and it's definitely not a one size fits all kind of thing, but you know, any feedback would be great. It's, um, did we document this well upstream yet, the snapshot API and like how it could be used and things like that? Uh, well, they're, they're uh, defined well. I mean, it's uh, definitely in the user guide. I think it it came along a little late because of just, um, I think it was one of those things where it moved so slowly. There was never a like, um, okay, this is, let's, let's really talk about this. I think, I think um, we did a bad job of publicizing it um, and maybe uh, it would make sense to, um, do a little more of that, maybe a convert blog post or something just um, to talk more about it, but I'm not exactly sure. I know that there's a, a user guide. Um, I, I sh should check the blog and see what, see what we've got there. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Uh, I, have, I have a question, sorry. Uh, how, is it, how is it related or not related to the to the design that is proposed now about VM cloning? Uh, good question. I haven't, I haven't seen the design about for VM cloning, but um, it should be related. I assume that the clone, uh, cloning will, um, you can clone from a snapshot. But yeah, if you could point me to that design, I'd love to take a look. Yeah, I actually, I, I pinged you on it. Um maybe a couple of days ago. Uh, it, so it's in the community repo. It's one okay. of the design proposals. 
And I, I thought the same thing, uh, that it's really closely related. Um, the snapshotting is really closely related to cloning. And I kind of wonder, so I'm about to change the, <laughs> do you care if we talk about the clone design, how it relates to snapshot right now, Michael, or did you need any more feedback? Uh, no, I mean, um, I, 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 yeah, let's talk about it. So I had a thought and I'm curious. Um, we, um, so for cloning and for snapshotting, I wonder if it all originates from the snapshot. So somebody takes a snapshot of a virtual machine and then whether you restore or you clone is the next a action. So you can restore that exact VM into the exact same object uh, or a clone action would be to take that snapshot and uh, create a brand new virtual machine out of it. Uh, but it seems like if we take that approach, then the, the snapshot is the like entity that the actions work on. Yeah, that was my assumption. Um, that was my assumption to how it would work. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So maybe that's the feedback for the the clone design. Maybe we should be looking in that direction. Yeah, I think the only um, you know the 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 VM snapshot API, you know, it will snapshot your manifests in any uh, CSI uh, volumes. Um, you know, I think clearly it, it may fall a little short for uh, people using storage that does not support um, volume snapshots. Um, so that would be, I think, one thing to maybe consider in the, the clone epic as well. If, if if that is, if that is uh, sufficient. So, so just for what I remember from Rev, uh, from, from Ovid, sorry, uh, the product. So there is a big difference between cloning and snapshotting in networking perspective. I don't know if it's taken care of in any, any of the solutions, but if you clone a VM, for networking, then you just don't clone the the network part at all, because or, or maybe right. you you don't we don't clone the the parts that are specific to the for example the MAC address that's the classic one, and but on snapshotting that's uh, that's uh, that's another story because when you restore it you want it to continue from where it stops so you want the, to save the MAC. But then it's there. It goes even more complicated because you have this. Uh, for example, in, in COVID, we have this cube mech pool, and in, in then you need to to make sure it's not it's still reserved for you. It's not going to to someone else or stuff stuff like that. So it's, it becomes more complicated a little bit. So in this regard, I'm I'm saying it's a bit different. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, they would definitely, if, if you took a snapshot, a VM snapshot of VMA, um, to use that in a clone operation, you would have to, you know, mutate a lot of, of the um, EM specification to make it work. But yeah, no, I'm excited for the clone. The clone is uh, moving along, and I'll I'll take a look later. All right. Um, okay. Um, that, that's everything that's posted on the agenda, and I don't see any open floor items. Does anyone have anything they want to speak up to on that? Also, any pull requests or mailing lists items that we want to call out and dive into real quick. Feel free to add those with you. Otherwise, sorry, second. Apologies. Okay. Well, with that, Are we good to dismiss?
growing one. Going twice. Thank you all for covering in my outage and good to be back. I'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good, bye. Have a good day. Thank bye. You. Thank you. Bye.